let go of envy it's terribly toxic you see friends when we describe what envy is it is a resentful dissatisfied longing for somebody else's possessions somebody else's position um, somebody else's achievements or success it is a reaction to lacking something that another person possesses and it is the distress that we feel when others have what we do not have and you will notice that in the Bible, we, we, you will find talk of godly jealous, you know, godly jealousy, where we're told that God is jealous over his people. But you will never find a godly envy. It is not spoken of in any good terms at all. Now, you will find people who will walk in lots of envy because the way they look at it, um, God has been generous to someone else. And has not been generous with them it is a feeling that can eat up somebody's bones it is a feeling that will steal the joy out of our lives if we allow ourselves to dwell on this negative emotion and we find these um, accounts of envy even in the Bible a major uh, story that you will know is the story of Cain and Abel. Cain, the older brother, was filled with envy towards his younger brother Abel. He was filled with envy because God looked with favor on the younger brother's sacrifice, but he did not accept Cain's offering. And I can imagine that this was not the only time where Cain felt envy because in this particular time of this of, of, of the sacrifice, you know, it seemed that Cain was so full of envy that he eventually killed his brother. I can imagine that he had been walking in envy even before that. And this was like the last straw moment for Cain. It seems to me that Cain had, you know, kind of a Judas heart, you know, really wicked and narcissistic and for him this was it and he reaped the results of the fruit thereof of walking in this envy we are also told about Joseph you know Joseph the son of Jacob and how his brothers envied him a lot because he was the clear favorite of his dad's you remember even his dad made a coat of many colors for him and not to mention the many dreams or delusions of grandeur, maybe according to his brothers, that Joseph had. We also see Saul, remember King Saul, and how he envied David. He had this overwhelming envy, you know, uh, for David because David was quite successful. You could tell that the favor of God was on David. David was um, able to kill Goliath when no one else could. David was courageous. He was bold. It seemed the ladies loved David. You remember they sang a song and they praised David for his achievements. And so Saul was very envious of David. And he tried many times to kill King David to no avail. You will remember the Jewish leaders as well, you know, the Pharisees, the Sadducees, the lawyers, um, and how they went through continuous bouts of envy and jealousy when Jesus walked the earth and the many times that they tried to trap him, but Jesus was untrappable. They tried many times to trap him with his own words, but they were never able to and they would look at Jesus walking and all the crowds following him and you know jealousy would just rise up in their hearts and envy and eventually Jesus was crucified and they must have been very um, excited at that many of the Pharisees but thanks be to God because Jesus Christ resurrected on the third day what does the Bible say about envy guys we are told in Proverbs 14 verse 30 that a heart at peace gives life to the body but envy rots the bones. Envy is a heart issue my friend. We are told in Mark 7 that for from within and this was the Lord Jesus talking. He said from within out of a person's heart 
come evil thoughts, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. And envy is mentioned right there. It happens when you feel like you're getting the short end of the stick when it comes to life, I suppose. When you look at your friend who, you know, you've probably been single, the both of you and your friend has finally gotten married since she has gotten married to this decent guy and you're still single and you've known this friend for a long time and you may begin to feel a little bit resentful that it happened to her and yet it has not happened to you. And if you do not deal with that negative emotion right there and if you just continually obsess on it you might be you know tempted to take action you might be tempted to go to the spouse and tell them that little secret that you know about your friend just so that you can throw a spanner in their marriage works if you don't deal with envy it's a negative emotion it's an evil emotion that we cannot allow to get the better of us Envy leads us to think that there isn't enough blessing to go around. And so we begin to harbor hate and ill feelings towards our friends, towards our relatives, and towards our neighbors. That may, you know, cause us to wish for and maybe go the extra mile and even cause harm to them. It's a thief and it steals our joy because if you're constantly looking at that relative of yours who finally bought that car who finally bought that house who finally got married who finally got the baby when you have waited four years five years and you do not have a child yet you know it will steal your joy envy will steal your joy when you're constantly obsessing over other people and what they have and what you do not have it is an opportunity friends to fight the flesh because this envy is a work of the flesh a terrible work of the flesh and when we constantly walk in envy when we allow envy to control our lives it's because we have moved our eyes away from the Lord and we have begun to look at other people We are constantly looking at other people instead of constantly looking at our King, the Lord Jesus Christ. There is no faith, there is no trust, there is no delighting in the Lord. Because we are told in Psalm 37 verse 4, Delight yourself in the Lord and he will give you the desires of your heart. And so when you delight yourself in the Lord and when you trust in him, then you know that your time will come. That the time of your blessing will come and you will enjoy and you will celebrate when other people you know get blessings in their lives rather than working in that selfish and toxic envy the root of envy is a dissatisfied heart We experience envy many times when we cannot have what our heart desires. We have not yet learned the secret of contentment. And in this life that we are living, I mean, looking at social media and how people are always splashing this or the other, it can be difficult, you know, to walk in this contentment, to just say, you know, I thank you, Lord, for what I have and to be contented with it and to delight ourselves in the lord but when you're dissatisfied all you see is what you do not have so how do we deal with this envy it is by remembering that our trust and our focus should be on the lord our trust you know our focus our faith should be in the lord it is in remembering that the lord wants us to be content It is the Lord's will for us to be content, not to always think of amassing this and the other, always thinking of why don't I have this and the other, always complaining. It is the Lord's will that we should be content. It is the Lord's will to say, Lord, thank you for my two children. 
thank you that I have food to eat. There are millions who are going to sleep hungry tonight, friends. We need to tell the Lord, thank you that we have food to eat. Thank you that I have clothes to wear. Thank you that I live in a country that, you know, there, there is no war. There may be many other issues, but we need to give the Lord thanks for what we have. Instead of walking with dissatisfied hearts. Envy is not of God. It is demonic. We are told in James chapter 3, but if you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, do not boast and lie against the truth. This wisdom does not descend from above, but it is earthly, sensual, demonic. If you have bitter envy and self-seeking in your hearts, this does not come from the Lord. This does not come from heaven. This is demonic. But what you get from above, what you get from the Lord Most High, is wisdom that is pure, peaceable, gentle, willing to yield, full of mercy and good fruits, without partiality and without hypocrisy. Envy is not a good fruit, my friends. Jealousy of the flesh is not a good fruit. It is the will of the Lord for us to walk in good fruits, for us to walk in love and not hate, not contentions, and not envy, for it is demonic. You know, in Isaiah 64 verse 4, we are told, For since the beginning of the world, men have not had nor perceived by the ear, nor has the eye seen any God besides you who acts for the one who waits for him. It is the Lord who acts for the one who waits for him. The Lord does not act for the one who is walking in envy as the envy is eating away at their bones. The Lord will act for those who wait for him, those who trust in him, knowing that he is your heavenly father, that he knows what is best for you. He, God works in his own calendar. He knows what you need. He is willing to open doors that should be opened. And thank God that our heavenly father is willing to close doors that should be closed so friends remember remember that we have a loving creator whose will for us is good it is acceptable and it is perfect do you trust that god has a good plan for you do you trust that his will for your life is good and acceptable and perfect because if you do then you will let go of that toxic emotion that envy and will begin to trust and delight in the most high be blessed friends